All right, we've got a row of things and a mostly built ship, so let's go ahead and talk about control systems. Hello fellow Endos, my name is Rob and welcome to another video in our Starbase tutorial series. Today we're talking about control systems and how that all goes together along with your parts that you've already put together on the ship from the last two videos. And if you haven't watched the last two videos, I would strongly suggest that. Um, I will put the links up here and in the uh, description, but you can also check out the uh, tutorial playlist for Starbase, and they are all there as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Right here we have the basics of what your control system is made up of, um, with the exception of this bit right here, which we will talk about in a second. But let's go through them, right? So we have your flight control unit. Um, this comes in three types. This comes in basic, advanced, and premium. You really want the advanced one because basic only has yaw, pitch, roll, forwards, and backwards. So you can't do the other uh, four directions. Whereas advanced has yaw, pitch, roll, backwards, forwards, and strafing. Um, so straight up, straight down, and side to side. Now, if you don't ever want to use that you can just go with the basic one but the uh, the cost for the advanced isn't really that much more and it's all tier one materials so it's really not that much harder to uh, make it when or buy it they're pretty cheap um, the next bit we have is our main flight computer then we have our pilot chair stand very important for the pilot chair we have our pilot chair and we have our pilot chair control table and these five things are basically what makes up your ship uh, control system. So let's talk about the uh, flight control unit advanced. So right away you can see that this one has these three arrows. These arrows indicate the forward direction of your ship and these arrows down here indicate the upward direction of your ship. So if I were to take this and slap it upside down on the ceiling, um, the ship would now be upside down. So my bottom thrusters would now be my top thrusters and uh, we would have some issues. The same thing if I were to put this in, uh, let's say we're gonna put it right here, but I accidentally put it in backwards. Well, now my ship flies the wrong way. So if I engage thrust, it's going to engage my forward thrusters, not my rear ones. And uh, similarly, if we put it sideways, well, now my uh, my side thrusters are my forward thrusters. So very important, make sure this thing faces the direction that your ship is actually meant to go. Come on. There we go. That your ship is actually meant to go and I'm gonna put my flight systems right underneath here and then we'll grab your uh, flight computer and uh, we'll put that under here as well and uh, we'll get started on that so your pilot chair stand we're gonna go ahead and attach this to this middle beam right here because I like a good view and I want to be able to see out the front of my ship um, plus we got some good attachment points right there. So right now, right away, we can go ahead and use the auto nailer, make sure it nails everything down. Okay. And, uh, we can touch up anything that we think we need to add. Like maybe I want to put a nail here to give it some more stability, um, than just those four that are down there. Um, once that's done, we can go ahead and grab the pilot's chair and we can snap that in on top of the stand. So why do you need the stand? Why not just slap a pilot chair down? Well, if you noticed on the stand, we have a data port. So if you don't have the stand, there's no way to get data to the seat. Uh, and then that becomes problematic because it doesn't understand that you're actually flying the ship. So you need the stand and the seat and they snap together like such. And then you go ahead and bolt them together. 
And then we take the pilot chair control table and we get it facing the right way, that way, and that snaps in. Um, come on, come on, buddy. That snaps in right here underneath the chair. And there you go, you have your control table. So we can do this again with some other chairs. We can duplicate this. Uh, we can make some other control surfaces. Um, we can make multiple points for with which you can control the seat. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab everything. Chair, chair stand, table. And I'm just going to use the arrow keys. I'm just going to duplicate this over here and duplicate it again over here. And that way we have three different control things that we can use for uh, different monitors and such and not overcrowd our main pilot chair, which is going to be in the middle. And then let's go ahead and make sure all those are bolted down. Alternatively, there are some other uh, control plates. So you can use these plates uh, that look like this. They do not snap onto... Uh, I mean, they do kind of snap on here, but they don't use the same uh, power. So basically, the data that these use comes through the base here. So your chair and your stand all share the data off of this port down here. If you add a uh, plate like this, so let's say I take this plate and uh, I want to make an arm over here or something, or I just want to put this here and have a bunch of displays on it that I can see from the uh, control seat here. Let's get that centered. I would need to add um, the, uh, the data port to that. So that is called the cable plug and uh, it just snaps on there like so and then you can add data. Um, if you don't want to waste space on there you can also add a uh, uh, cable angle support here and that's what I like to do is uh, we'll add this come on uh, there we go we'll add this here and then we'll add the uh, cable plug onto that right there and that way we don't waste any of the space on the block there All right and if we added more of them um, we would need to add some more data plugs. Uh, you can play around and see if they'll share. I know if you clip them on to the big one here, they will share. So if I were to do, uh, let's say I were to snap this onto here and snap this onto here, then they will still share this data connection. But if I were to put it like next to it, um, come on, if I were to put it over here, uh, it's not sharing this data connection here. So that is important. Um, and we could do something like that, right? Of course, that is blocking my view very much so. So I don't know that I want to do that. Um, but that is your option, right? So let's get rid of all this. We don't need that right now. We're just going to focus on the uh, regular plates here. So what do you put on here? Well, kind of whatever you want, but let's talk about what you need in terms of the basics. So if we look at our main flight controller here, we're going to click on it. Not that one, this one. And we see that we have a bunch of variables here. So these three we don't really need to worry about. Um, it's these right here. So FCU forward, FCU backwards, FCU rotational pitch, FCU rotational yaw, FCU rotational roll, and then FCU up, down, and FCU right, left. These are uh, your directions for the ship to do basically what you're commanding it to. And in order for those to work, we need the levers that go with them. So uh, we are going to choose a couple different levers here for FCU forward and FCU backwards. We are going to use a just a regular lever as such. And uh, let's get in here and we will put these on this control panel over here. Now remember you don't have to use these. These don't need to be in front of you all the time. 
Um, but so you can you can put them here. You can put them on the floor if you wanted to add a uh, control panel like down here on the floor so you don't even see them. Um, but we'll just stick them up here for now. And as long as they're touching on there and bolted down, they are good to go. Um, I think this is kind of upside down though. So, um, you know, either way, uh, we could take this and turn it around. Turn it all around. Come on. You know you want to. <laughs> it doesn't really want to. Oh, come on. Why, why are my directional buttons not working? Okay, now we've got these uh, in the correct direction, although you could basically have them any direction. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> and then um, we can go ahead and call these by the name on here and just for, uh, sorry, on the uh, flight control unit advanced. And just for continuity, we will uh, go ahead and call them this, but we could rename these if we want. So if we just wanted... Uh, FCU F for forward and FCU back for backwards. I know I just said we'll keep them the same for continuity, but you know, fuck it. Uh, so right here where it says lever state, that is the name that you want to put in here. So on the lever state, we're going to call this FCU F. And on this one, we're going to call this one FCU B for backwards. So that matches what's down here. And as long as they match and you put them in the right place, obviously if I name this FCU pitch, um, that's gonna really mess you up. So don't do that, uh, you know. Um, so, you know, just to shorten these, I'm gonna call this one FCU pitch. We're gonna call this one FCU yaw, and we're gonna call this one FCU roll. And, uh, We'll just keep these the same. Um, but shortening these does help if you get into YOLO code, you'll want a shorter name so you don't waste as many characters. So on our FCUF, on our forward, so our main throttle, uh, we're gonna wanna set a couple things here. If you want a turtle mode, you need to change the lever max output here. You need to change the name of that to turtle. And that way, when the turtle button is pressed, um, it throttles back that attribute. And then we're also going to want to change this down here. If you're going to use cruise, um, we want to change this to be called cruise. Um, I just like to call it CRS for cruise. And we'll set that to 10. And this right here, our movement bind speed, we're also going to set to 10. And for our lever dead zone, we're gonna set this to zero so that it stays where it's put. Because otherwise, if you put a number in here, um, it's gonna try to snap back to zero anytime you let off uh, of the throttle. So same thing on the backwards one here. Um, we're going to go ahead and make sure these values are correct. Our max output is, zero, is uh, 100. And then we're going to go ahead and set all these to 0. And our centering speed will be 10. 
and our bind move speed is going to be 5. And you can play around with these values if you want to and see what they do um, as far as bind, uh, centering speed and bind speed goes. So that is our FCU forward and our FCU backwards. Um, and you know, you could shorten it even more and just call it F, F, F or FB, FCB, I don't know. Um, whatever you want, right? All right, so on this panel over here, we are gonna use uh, centering levers. So we'll go ahead and slap these down. We just need uh, a couple of these. Let's go ahead and, nope, yes. Why is this so difficult? There we go, one, two, and three. And we can pull this one down a little bit so that it looks like it's a big block of levers. Okay, so this is the standard format you'll see in most ships. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to label this one our um, FCU up down. Um, and, it, you know, it doesn't matter, but I kind of like to keep these things where they are. So we these values will stay the same. We'll go down here and uh, change the dead zone to zero again and 10 and five and uh, over here we're gonna call this one let's call this one yaw so this will be our FCU yaw and this will be zero and then these are correct same thing again dead zone zero centering speed 10 Movement bind speed five. All right, over here, we're gonna call this one FCU yaw. No, FCU roll. Zero, 10, and five. Um, what else do we got? We got pitch and uh, right, left, so. FCU pitch and zero ten five and right and left FCU right left zero one hundred zero ten and five okay so now we've got that down we have a complete control system that will work when we move these uh, handles and such so now that is set up we get to the next part of the setup which is um, you can add buttons and displays but we will we will uh, not call that the second part because we're just talking about basics we'll get to that all right so we have our uh, FCU uh, flight control unit set up for all of these values so that is complete um, we don't have to touch that again so what do we want to do next we want to mess with our main flight computer so what does our main flight computer do our main flight computer stores the values of all of our thrusters and uh, engines so we need to go ahead and label all of these thrust power level uh, attributes here. So you can just keep all of your engines called this, uh, but I like to go ahead and actually label things so I know what they are. So we're going to have a couple groups of things. We're going to have our main engines, um, which is going to supply our forward thrust. So I'm going to call those main uh, port main starboard and main center and then we're going to have our uh, our forward engines that are going to provide our stopping and our backing up so we'll call those front port and front starboard and then we're going to have all of our thruster groups 
So we should have uh, two on each side, and uh, I just like to divide them up into groups. So we're going to have our port one, our port two, our starboard one, our starboard two, and then our top one, top two, top three, top four, and then the same thing with our bottoms. We're going to have bottom one through four. So bottom one, bottom two, bottom, missed an O. Make sure you get these uh, correct. They have to match up or else stuff won't work. And this should be the first thing you check if uh, you're like, oh crap, well those one thrusters aren't working. And the second thing you should check is the cabling. Um, but sometimes in here, uh, especially in the editor, uh, you might have typed something and then you go to hit W to move forward. Sorry. Oh, it's actually working now. So if I do bottom one and then I forget to hit enter and then I go to move forward and I'm like, huh, what's going on? Well, I just typed www in there, which just broke the code. So it's like accidentally putting a comma in the wrong place. Uh, it will screw you up every time. So how do these match up? We have these things and let's uh, let's keep it um, memory memory. Let's remember where these are, right? So we have four on the top, four on the bottom, two on the port side, two on the starboard side, and then we have our uh, main three main groups and three two front groups. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look how I have these set up. So just right away, right here, we have our port one, port one, port one, port one. So that is our port one. And then back here is our port two. So all of these are labeled port two on the first variable. And you don't need to worry about this variable right here um, just yet. So same thing, we have our top and we have our bottom. So we can see our bottoms are, we got one, group two, group three, and group four. And then the same thing over here, starboard two, starboard one, and then if I look at my engines here, my forward facing ones are called front S and you do have to make sure that all of these have the same name on them. Otherwise you're going to have to enter something. So if I called these two front S one, I would have to make sure that if I called these front S two, that was also in my flight computer or my flight controller. Um, and then back here, we can see that all of these are labeled main starboard, main S, and these are labeled main C, and these are labeled main P. So uh, a helpful hint or tip at the beginning is when you first put these down, name it. Um, be, and that way, if you duplicate any of them or you copy paste them, it will keep that variable. So I left these open on top just so you could see I already called this one a nothing yet. So this is, that's top four. Uh, so let's see, did I name this? No, I didn't. So let's call this top one. I'm gonna go over here and name this top two. It's my top two list. Uh, so now if I duplicate this by holding the shift key and dragging, these all have the same value. So you can see they all say top one. And the same thing here, if I duplicate this one, it now all says top two. So that's a helpful handy thing. Anytime you rename anything, you wanna do it on the first one so you don't have to go back and uh, individually click on every single one and make sure that they're correct. So that is the way that works. And now um, those are in uh, here. So the ship knows what's going on. Now, how does the ship know where something is? It just does. So you, you don't have to name them any specific thing. I could call this blah, blah, blah. Uh, and just as long as I name all of these uh, blah, 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 the ship knows that there are four of these on this side and four of these on this side and kind of has a uh, uh, intelligence of its own as far as where you put your thrusters on what it needs to do when you try to roll versus try to yaw versus try to 
uh, uh, pitch. So that is um, is that. Wait, roll, pitch, right, left. Oh, well, I should have switched these. Pitch should be over here, not that, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what directions the buttons are facing. Um, you could stick them all on the ceiling in the same direction. Um, but for my sanity, I guess, uh, we'll go ahead and switch these two. Actually, you know what would be easier? Let's just rename them because I don't want to deal with the freaking rotational tool. So we'll call this one FCU Pitch, and we'll rename this one FCU Yaw. All right, and then we just make sure that's all the same. Yep. All righty. So that is how we set all that up, and then um, we would go ahead and wire all of these. And uh, I'll just do this my easy way by hiding the floor. Uh, where are my plates? There we go. So if you go ahead and you click on these little eyeball in things here, and you click lock. Uh, you won't be able to interact with those floor pieces. The lock part is important because if you don't click lock, you can still click on those floor pieces even though they're invisible. Um, but we don't want to deal with that. We want them completely uh, invisible here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and all of these just need data connections. So I'm going to go ahead and use the cable tool. And uh, we'll just drag one of these from down here. Ah, I just disconnected it. Ah, oh, be careful when you're right clicking. Okay, so we're gonna bring this up here and then through the wall. And uh, we'll just come in that way. And then uh, I can unhide the, uh, the floor again. And I don't know if these are actually supposed to pass through the floor like that, but they do. Um, so I can kind of do the same thing with the beams. Uh, let's go ahead and hide the beams and lock them. And I'm just going to take this and come over here with it. And then we'll come in there. And for my flight control seat, we'll go all the way over here. And then I'm going to unhide. I'm going to bring the beams back and we can come up this way and into there. Um, and then we can come out here, go back here, and kind of uh, just go along here, make sure that they're all connected, right? Same thing, go back here, come over here, and they are all connected now. So we should have full control if I go ahead and I go into F5, which is test mode, and I get in the seat here. Ah, oh, my ship has a durability error. Well, that's great. So, we got nothing. We got no movements. Um, is it because nothing is bound? Nope. Oh, yeah, that's what it's going to be. So, because I renamed stuff, um, the traditional stuff is not going to work. So I'm going to have to go down to the bottom where I renamed everything um, to, uh, to find these to um, rebind them, which is always great. So, uh, so we changed them to FCUF and FCUB. So I would have to find that in here wherever it decided to go. Um, but we're not getting any anything anyway here. So that would have to be a more detailed troubleshooting session than I want to deal with right now. Um, but we do have everything labeled and uh, all of this is correct. Uh, MFC01, MFCL01. So uh, maybe we have a disconnect somewhere down there. Who knows? Um, 
but that is how we set up our main controls. Now let's talk about readouts and buttons. So the way those work is that they take the name information of whatever attribute um, is on the thing and then display that information. So if we take one of these progress bars, oof, not that big one, um, let's say this one, and we call this generator, something has to have this attribute. So this name generator has to be uh, shared somewhere. So if we go to the back of the ship where the generators are, um, you can see that I renamed these, uh, this value right here, generator. And uh, yeah, so like on this one, this one doesn't have it set yet. Um, this one I just called generate. So we can reference that in, uh, in the generator script when we get to the episode on scripting. And we'll just call this generator. And then obviously you would want to do this on the first one and then duplicate them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the same thing on these right here. Um, which one did I leave empty? Okay, so we're going to rename fuel chamber unit rate limit because that is a long thing to type on a panel. And we're just going to call this uh, shutdown. And that is going to tie to our button. So when we hit the shutdown button, this attribute right here is going to get set to zero and basically shut all of the generators off. And then this right here, fuel chamber fuel, um, we want to change this to fuel rod two, I believe. If this is three, yeah. And this is four, yeah. Okay, so this is fuel rod one, this is fuel rod two, and that way we can label these on the board as well. Um, and down here, so how do we get our battery? Well, if we look at one of these, the way we want to set these is our battery priority doesn't really matter unless you're going to get into multiple power systems or power redundancy. Um, the battery priority just means which uh, when will this charge? So zero will charge before one, one will charge before two, etc. So for stored battery power, we're just going to change this to battery and we only have to do this on one of them um, because we're not going to get into complex uh, mathematics in, in naming all of those like bat one through bat six or whatever. Um, and then in here with our propellant tanks on the uh, gas network stored resource right here, um, we're just going to call that propellant and that is out of 1 million. So 1 million propellant. So we will go ahead and remember that. So now when our generator is running, it will reference that value. And uh, we can go ahead and duplicate this button a couple times. So we'll have this one be battery. And uh, we will put our panel max value to 10,000 because one battery is 10,000. And we only need to worry about one battery because all of the batteries are currently in parallel. So whatever one charges, the rest of them will charge, right? Uh, we will name this one to uh, propellant. And we will change our max value to 1 million. And we will name this one um, what else do we have back there we're gonna name this one radiator and that's out of a hundred and uh, how did I get radiator well earlier I went and uh, went to my radiators and I named one of these um, rad radiator so as that starts uh, producing radiation that number will increase on here um, and then if we wanted to, we could put a display for each of the fuel rods. So as long as we change this uh, display to fuel rod one, um, and we want to make sure our max value is out of the current max value. So whatever your max value is here, you want to make sure it's represented down here. Otherwise, you won't get a uh, 
good readout. So that is that. Um, so now we have fuel rod one, and then we can duplicate that and just change the number here to like fuel rod two, fuel rod three, fuel rod four, um, and so on. If you want a readout, let's say you have another panel here and you just want a readout of all of your fuel cells, uh, fuel rods in progression, then you could do that. Uh, we just have to change it. So hopefully that makes sense as far as readouts go. Um, if we wanted a readout of our thrust output, uh, we would change on one of these engines back here, just the ones on the back because we don't want to read forward thrust output. Um, we would change this thruster current thrust. Let's just change this to thrust, right? And then if we reference that value on a plaque up here, um, it would display our current thrust. So let's say we wanted that like down here or something and we'll rename that to thrust and we'll say out of a thousand so then when we hit our forward thrust that should go up and you'll see if you're at maximum thrust or not um, and you can kind of uh, tell whether you're in turtle mode and stuff like that so let's talk about buttons now we have a couple different types of buttons the one we are going to use the most though is our hybrid button um, because it's got a nice readout on it um, but we also have the smaller little simple buttons. Um, we have these uh, these half buttons here that you can kind of put together and make uh, two different buttons. So they also have a color state that you can change the colors on them. Um, we'll go ahead and put one there. And then let's flip this over. I'm going to put one there. Um, and then we have these uh, simple button 12 by 12s which if you go on here, come on. There we go. And uh, we kind of need to rotate it and get it. There we go. Um, so we'll just do two for now, but you can do like a whole bank of four and that way you can have more buttons together. However, they don't have displays on them, so you don't actually know what they are. Um, but if we look at these, these basically have the same value systems, right? We have button state, button style, and button color. Button style is basically if I push it, does it stay on until I push it again? Or if I push it, does it immediately turn off if I stop pushing it? Um, you can kind of get a description of what all of these are in the description field. So, uh, like down here, uh, zero is halt toggle, one is basic toggle, and two is a floor, four state switch. Um, but we also have the colors, zero is blue, one is red, two is green, three is blue. So if we wanted to change this to red, we would just change the button color to uh, one, and now we have a red button. Um, same thing on these. We could change this to three, and now we have a blue button again. I meant two. And then we have the... Oh, that's button style. Whoops. Button color, two. There we go. Now we have a green button. Um, so what is different about these uh, hybrid buttons? Well, we have a couple different values here. So we have our button on state value and our button off state value. And basically, these two tell us what is the state when we push the button. So let's say that this is our shutdown button. This is going to shut. This is going to engage that shutdown command we put on the generators. So our shutdown value is going to be 100. Our button on state is going to be 0. And our button off state is going to be 100. Whoops, that's the 1,000. And our button style is going to be 1, which means when we push it, There we go. When we push it, it turns on and on, and when we push it again, it turns off. So what did we just say? So this is a shutdown button that has a value of 100. If, we, if it's on, the generators are off. If the button is off, the generators are at 100%. Um, so let's talk about two other things that you're likely to want to put on your ship, and that is the cruise control and the turtle button. So let's go ahead and we're going to call this one cruise. And that is going to give us a value of 10. And uh, right here, 
our button off state is going to be 10 and our button style is going to be 1. And basically between 1 and 10, um, when we push this button, it's going to make this value right here. Oh, right. I got to call it the same thing. Otherwise we break it. So this is CRS. So in our value here, we referenced CRS is 10, right? And that is that means that this is all the way up. So whoops, I can't move that in uh, build mode. So 10 is all the way up. So zero is all the way down. So if we click this, we're basically saying if we hold if we click this button, then the button off style is 10 and the button on style is zero. So when this is on, um, this uh, value right here will not engage, but when it's off, this value will change. So uh, it basically turns on and off the value that used to be here, which was our, not our dead zone, but our bind, I forget what the name of it was. It's, uh, uh, it's our centering speed. So that's how that works. And our button style is one. All right, and then on our last thing here, we're gonna call a turtle mode. Turtle, turtle, turtle. And for turtle mode, value is gonna be 100. Our button on state is going to be 20. So we're limiting thrust to 20% when this is on. And when it's off, 100% thrust. And button style one. So that is how that goes. Um, and now you can have your very own turtle mode on your ship. And that's uh, all we're going to talk about for this one. So buttons, buttons, who's got the buttons? There's also like safety buttons with covers. If you want to have a crazy button, you know, there's just there's a bunch of shit in here that you can play with if you want to. Um, but we just talked about the basic stuff to get your ship going. And uh, let's see, now that I have these, these buttons down, um, we always want to make sure that they are bolted. Otherwise, they're going to fly off the ship. So, th And again, my happy friend, the auto bolt tool, is like, well... You can both those yourself if you want to. I don't really have a say in this. Do what you want. Right? Right. So uh, all those are bolted. All those are bolted. Great. Great. Um, let's go into test mode. And now we can see that these have values. So we have our battery at 1,000. Um, and... Uh, if we click shut down, well, our generators are not turning on. Oh, yeah, now they are. So you can see our generator is now powering up um, because we don't have any script on here to control our generator rate. And uh, none of these levers are doing anything. Oh, that does something. Okay. So our thrusters are working. In that direction. So... Stuff is working the way it's supposed to. We might have a little bit of a thruster problem um, with things firing. That shouldn't be firing, so I'll have to go through and check all my wiring and everything else. Um, but that is how all of that works. We can get out of test mode here. And, uh, yeah, once you have all that in place, then it just becomes about troubleshooting um what's going on so next episode we'll go ahead and talk about our yolo how to get that all set up 
uh, with the YOLO racks and the YOLO chips. And we'll talk about some basic uh, YOLO code for uh, use in your ship. But hopefully you found that helpful. If you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and uh, hit that notification bell every time you uh, want to be notified of a new video dropping. Um, it'll bug you. That's what it does. So if there's anything else, go ahead and drop it in the comment section as always. And as always, I will see you out here in space. Stay safe, my friends.